Welcome, I'm Rabbi Phil Bressler of Beit Am in Corvallis, Oregon, and this is the daily summary video for the Kitsur Shulchan Aruch Yomi Daily Halakha Learning Project, covering the passage from Siman 87, Seif 18, to Siman 87, Seif 24. I know the calendar says to go until 88.1, but the daily division of these Simanim is kind of perplexing to me. Obviously, they didn't have daily video making in mind when they divvied it up. I'm going to save discussion of the first CEF of Siman 88 for tomorrow because it introduces a new concept called Muktzah that really needs to be explained. And I'm just going to save that for tomorrow's video. You can find links to the Hebrew and English text of this passage and to the calendar of upcoming passages in this video's description. We'll finish up talking today about animals and birds and caring for them on Shabbat. It's okay to feed your indoor animals, your cats, dogs, birds, things like that, that are your responsibility to feed on Shabbat. But outdoor animals and animals that aren't your responsibility, please don't feed them on Shabbat. That counts as troubling yourself. Don't feed the birds in the park, for example, or, uh, or throw food to the, the ducks in the river. The footnote here adds that if you know that an animal is hungry, it's okay to feed it because it's good to be compassionate to all God's creatures. The next bit feels a little icky that it's lumped in with this section about feeding or not feeding animals, but I get why it's a related principle. It's okay to invite a non-Jew over to eat on Shabbat and to feed them. It's not your direct responsibility to take care of feeding someone else, but we are all responsible for maintaining good relationships with our neighbors. So in a way, you kind of are responsible. Don't drive loose animals back into cages or into the house. That counts as number, five, number uh, 25, trapping. With domesticated animals, it's not really the malacha itself to drive them back into a cage or house, but a rabbinic prohibition around the malacha of trapping. So you can herd them back to a safe place if you're worried that they're gonna get stolen. Uh, you can't help an animal give birth on Shabbat. Uh, not clear that this is a malacha itself. I think maybe the principle of nolad, uh, avoiding something that's uh, newly created on Shabbat might be in play. Footnote here adds that when the animal's life is in danger, you can ask a non-Jew non to come and do it for you, or you can even do it yourself if no one is around. As noted yesterday, there's a distinction I kind of struggle with between doing something solely for an animal's comfort, which is not okay, and doing something to avoid an animal's discomfort, which is okay. It kind of makes sense on paper, but it seems difficult to distinguish in reality. And so there's an example here. It's okay to apply oil to a wound that's causing an animal pain, but it's not okay if that wound is already healing and it's just for comfort. I don't exactly know how you're supposed to know whether that animal is in pain from that wound or not. That seems hard to distinguish in reality. Another example, if an animal ate too much and now it's suffering from having a distended belly, it's okay to have it trot around the yard. Uh, but you can't presumably have it trot around after eating just, just for its own comfort, just because it enjoys uh, moving around. Another example, if it's suffering from too much blood, which to be clear is not a thing, it's okay to have it go cool off in, in a pool and you can have a non-Jew do bloodletting for you with that animal if it might die. Again, too much blood is not a thing. Bloodletting is not a practice we have anymore, but remember this is from a different era. That's all for today. As always, our learning is dedicated to Rabbi Shlomo Gansfried, the author of the Kitsur and the historic Jewish community of Ushara, Ukraine. See you tomorrow.